panel's budget resolution for up to 15 minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I am rising to propose the uh, Cabinet's uh, motion as in your uh, printed agendas. Mr. Mayor, this budget is being prepared clearly against the most difficult financial position this Council has ever been in. The responsibility for this, Mr. Mayor, lies squarely with the Tory government in continuing to impose austerity on communities least able to cope. Tory cuts of 132 million over the next four years, with 45 million required next year, coming on top of the 150 million over the past seven years, means we're all must take drastic and sometimes painful action to continue to deliver these public services. The debate tonight, Mr. Mayor, will focus on what these priorities should be within the massively reduced budget, uh, where the government today has clearly failed in its moral responsibility to properly fund local public services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, when the government announces the revenue support grant, historically the block of money councils have relied on to fund public services will disappear. The message this sends to our community is clear. Wirral, you are on your own. When the government announces that in 2020 councils will have only council tax receipts, business rates, and income from fees and charges to fund the services, the message this sends is we are not all in this together. How can we be, Mr. Mayor, when areas like Wirral, with a low council tax base and lower levels of business rates, will be hit much harder? than those authorities with multi-million pound houses and corporate headquarters <coughs> worth billions. Yet again, Mr Mayor, the Tory government works the system to hit predominantly poorer councils run by Labour administrations in the north, while benefiting predominantly wealthier councils run by Conservative administrations in the south. Clearly, Mr Mayor, this policy is driven by party political considerations rather than any notions of equity or fairness. And Mr Mayor, if you want proof that this government is more interested in favours than fairness, look no further than the leaked sweetheart deal between Tory controlled Surrey County Council yeah. and the government to persuade Surrey to hush up its plans for a referendum on a 15% council tax rise. Mr Mayor, it's a disgrace. So it's right that as well as acting responsibly by setting money in the budget, Labour will continue to highlight the unfairness in the way in which the government has cut the budgets of local councils. And I would appeal to members of the opposition this evening, put aside your party political loyalties, join us in standing up for the people of the world and demand a fair deal from this government. Yeah. 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 Mr Mayor, nowhere is the need for action more urgent than in social care, where we know nationally there's a funding gap of 2.6 billion by 2020, in Wirral, where we have an ageing population with growth in people with complex uh, disabilities, uh, fee rate increases in care homes, we have a shortfall in social care funding of 19.6 million. The government's response has been to tell us to raise vital funds from the residents of the borough. But their social care of precept of 3% will only raise 3.6 million from local people. And members of this council should join us in saying it is the government should be asked to fund this care budget. After all, many residents feel this is what they do through the payments of, of income tax. I'm pleased that the other party leaders have joined me in writing to the Secretary of State for Health, seeking an urgent meeting on social care funding in the world. Let us hope he responds positively. So our approach, Mr Mayor, to the budget ha has been to act with honesty and openness with our residents and our staff, and to be really honest and open and say that people are going to have to pay more for some things. We will have to ask residents and other organisations to help deliver some services we currently provide for them. In terms of our organisation, we must act more commercially. The current model of local government, where services are still delivered direct from the town hall, is no longer sustainable. So we must look at new models to ensure that services residents rely on remain available. And I want to pay tribute to Anna Backlund, the Cabinet Member for Transformation, who has already overseen the creation of a number of new service delivery models, essential rural mm -hmm. evolutions, um, to name a few. These new models will protect jobs, deliver significant savings and efficiencies, and exposes the, the lie, I believe, in the Tory budget amendment that this council has done nothing on transformation, not confirmed. Mr Mayor, given the importance of council tax receipts and business rates, we must look again at opportunities to build new 
The members opposite may be plain, but let's remember the only reason the fire chief is proposing a new fire station is because the Tories refuse to properly fund the existing ones we had in West Kirkland. And of course, checks and balances exist. Like any scheme, the sponsors will have to convince the planning committee that such development constitutes exceptional circumstances. On the issue of raising income, I want to make it clear that we will accept local groups and charities from charges for running free to attend events in parks. On the other hand, it's right that organisations that run events for a profit should pay a fee towards the cost of cleaning the site after the event and for using valuable public assets. Mr Mayor, I want to reiterate that we remain totally committed to the delivery of 20 pledges in the world plan in partnership with others and I'm proud that we've achieved what we've achieved so far on delivering our pledges. May I particularly refer to the high the new one in so, which opens next month. This is a wonderful, as went around it on, on Saturday, it's a wonderful example of public-private partnership and I'm proud that this council is invested in this resource. I want to pay tribute to Councillor Jean Stapleton Without your tenacity and drive to get this facility in world, it would not have happened. And you can be proud that as a result of your dedication to this project, the lives of thousands of young people in world will be transformed. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.
terms of all this means this is a council tax. Given that you can say that we have to find, in line with the vast majority of other local properties, in 1718 we are proposing a 1.99% increase in council tax. And given the prices in social care, a 3% increase in the social care precept. We propose this with no sense of satisfaction, given that many families are struggling to make ends meet. So, Mr. May, in conclusion, this has been an extremely difficult budget due to the scale of the cuts we're facing. We remain determined to deliver good quality public services for the people of Wirral, to deliver our 20 pledges, and to underpin everything we do in line with our core principles of social justice and fairness. I also want to take this opportunity of thanking our staff for the fantastic job they do day in, day out. <laughs> Thank you. 
volumes received for air the years increased by 1.5 million next year. And as a result, the average hourly rate for three and four year olds will increase to four pounds, and that's from three pounds 68. And um, in, addition, in addition, all the providers will receive five pounds 12 pence per hour for two year olds, and that's an increase from four pounds eighty-five. However, I want to make this clear: the council's three nursery schools will continue to, to receive protected funding in addition to this, and this is based on a lump sum of one hundred thousand pounds and an average hourly rate of five pounds seventy-five per hour. Nursery schools have their higher level funding protected until two thousand and twenty. The Department for Education believe all provision should then be funded on the same basis. The significant financial pressures nursery schools are experienced is acknowledged. I'd just like to finish to say about school budgets um, for mm. next year and the coming years. Um, and in the light of sort of the meetings with the um, teachers' unions and also with Unison and Unison have um, brought out some figures to say about the impact on, on, on the world and the new funding formula. Uh, the, the funding formula um, um, and the um, increases, as I said, the flat rate increase to schools does not take into consideration pension contributions, pay, or national insurance or the apprentice levy. So that's got to be found for school budgets that exists already. So no extra money has been given for that. So there's going to be huge financial pressures on all our schools, special schools, primary <coughs> schools, and secondary schools. And I've been told that um, in world, for example, um, for, for um, average primary school costs, on that basis that the schools are having to fund that will be something in the average of 87,000 pounds or 339 pounds per pupil. That's for primary schools. In secondary schools, the loss is going to be as much as 405,000 or 477 pounds per pupil. So you can see the huge, huge pressure. I know we talked about the National Health Service and social care and that, but what our governors are going to have to do in the coming years is going to be really very, very difficult. So, you know, I would be pleading with everyone to go back to ministers and say, you know, we're investing in our young people. They are our future. If we are going to be cutting down the opportunities in school, then, you know, the, the next generation is going to be a lost generation. So, you know, I'm pleading with all members of the council to um, ask asked me to write a letter to central government to say that it's very, it's going to be almost impossible for our schools in this authority to be able to be solving if those are the kind of cuts we're having to make. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Oh, 
same budget resolution and estimate show that World Council will have more income than last year by approximately 1.6 million and intends to increase its spending this year by a further 1.6 million on last year while delivering an excess of income over expenditure of some 12 million. So no doubt this situa situation explains why the leader of the council and the chief executive wrote to the government in October he would, uh, would notice this which is the way it's been, uh, been put across. But the leader of the council and the chief executive wrote to the government in October 2016 in the following terms. We are extremely confident in our plans and approach for the coming years and believe the certainty of the four-year settlement offers further spend will further cement our ability to deliver a sustainable balanced budget for the entire period while still achieving our plans for world. Which strikes me as a bit different in tone to what's actually uh, the leader of the council is now saying. So one wonders whether it just suck it up to the government or whether it was something else. So Mr. Mayor, it's our view, backed by the administration's own documents, that there are choices to be made. Mr. Mayor, our choice is to develop works for everyone. And if the budget amendment I'm moving tonight is passed, there will be no parking charges introduced to rural country parks, and our residents will not be charged twice their upkeep. We'll sweep away ladies additional tax on keeping healthy and enjoying outdoor pursuits. Charities monitoring groups, Mr Mayor, notwithstanding what the leader of the council has said, and uh, we'll wait to see it in black and white, will not be charged up to a thousand pounds to hold events in our parks or on our beaches and local communities will be given the funding to support priorities in their own locality through constituents. There will be no increase in car parking tariffs. Conservatives will continue to show our unequivocal support to our local shopping centres and the independent retailers who are already <coughs> battling hard against retail giants there are shoppers in with free parking at their superstores. And there will be a 20 bed respite service at a refurbished and modernised Gertrude Court, honouring the pledge we have consistently made to service users, families, and staff. And, Mr. Mayor, there will be no, no more, unnecessary, undelivered, and unwanted rural view newspapers across this borough. Mr. Mayor, our budget amendment also looks to the longer term. Last year, we expressed our concern about the capacity of the multi agency safeguarding club to meet the number of referrals it receives. We wanted to ensure that all rural children were safe, and should any child be at risk of harm, they are identified at the earliest opportunity and timely, effective interventions were put in place. And therefore, sought to strengthen the hub with five additional experienced children's social workers to identify those children at risk of harm early and put in timely interventions to keep them safe. Mr. Mayor, this of course was rejected by the Labour administration at the time, only for them then to carry out an embarrassing but welcome U-turn and implement our suggestion. It is a matter of great shame on the Labour administration that this much needed U-turn only occurred following the results of an appalling Ofsted inspection for which the administration continues to refuse or accept any accountability for the failing of Ofsted by definition. I think it is. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, we are proposing that we invest in the multi systemic therapy programme to work with families where young people are involved in violence, drug, and alcohol misuse, making a difference in this group as well as doing the sensible thing to do, has the potential to save considerable sums of time and money in the future. And, Mr Mayor, we're proposing new initiatives to integrate health and care services using the Neville and Bertolt model, which is shown by using highly skilled, self-managed teams. We can save costs, raise quality, and improve service user experience and satisfaction. We're also asking the Leader of the Council to look for the future and make a clear and unambiguous <coughs> statement that the development of the Hive will not lead to reductions in facilities or funding to the Council's existing pattern of youth provision up to 2020. And I heard what the Leader had to say, but I, I got the impression it was a degree of implication, so you can have 
Council rejected our suggestion of improving oversight and governance of the Council's change programme, insisting, as I recall, that he was in control and he didn't need any help from anyone else. And Mr Mayor, once again, it has failed to deliver the financial benefits promised by the leader of the Council by over a million pounds. I invite the Council just to think what could have been done with that money in terms of social care and other services. However, Mr Mayor, what else has gone on under the leader of the Council's control and change programme? Well, I can tell you, a lot of the achieved no identifiable financial benefits attributable, attributable to his portfolio change. He has agreed to one, £188,000, £188,129 for a programme manager. A further £181,471 on a second programme manager. £139,080 on an interim head of transformation. Paid £665,760 to CAPTA for business cases that were achieved in private between officers and the Labour cabinet. £185,000 to companies provide economic and legal advice so we can set up a joint venture property company which the administration will then not allow councillors to call in for scrutiny. Time and again, this time and time again, the Labour League and Council and Labour Group colleagues have told us there's no money to spend on services. But yes, he can spend a total of £1.3 million pounds on these five items alone. Does the Labour Group really believe the Council needs two programme managers paid over £180,000 a year, a Director of Transformation and an Interim Head of Transformation at the same time? Or that Capita have added over half a million pounds worth of value to how the Council do the Labour group really believe that? I can now understand why the leader of the council doesn't want anyone else looking at his change portfolio. With such a record of underachievement and bloated costs, he is clearly more interested in hiding his own failures than achieving a council <coughs> that works for everyone. Mr Mayor, the Labour administration budget goes through tonight, it will have ignored the views of over 17,000 residents who have told Labour councillors that they do not want to see any charges brought in for parking in our country park. Mr Mayor, the leader of the council should be aware that he ignores the public's aspirations and express wishes at his peril. He only needs to look at what happened to Jeremy Corbyn's candidate in Copeland, or even closer at home in Kersal in Salt. So Mr Mayor, let me return to my own income. With the council receiving 260 £6 million pounds next year. Budget setting is most definitely a series of choices. Despite what the Leader of Council wants the public to believe, within this budget amendment we have spelt out 20 choices very, very clearly for all Labour councillors opposite to understand. But let me be crystal clear in the chamber tonight. It is time to scrap your town hall newspaper, which has been plagued with issues and has put you firmly in the crosshairs of DC LG. We will then use that money to stop the introduction of any car parking charges in the country parks, responding not only to the 17,000 residents that have signed petitions that effect, but to the grassroots football clubs that will be decimated by these charges, to the golfing society who works so hard to maintain their membership and council income, and to the business owners who genuinely fear their livelihoods are in jeopardy are in jeopardy by this labour proposal. Our budget also seeks to support our shopping centres across the borough. We do not believe that now is the right time to put any additional burdens on our local business owners when they are facing challenges on online retail and out of, out of town retail parks. Council should be doing all it can to maintain the vibrancy of our high streets and our amendment seeks to do just that. Mr. Mayor, Conservatives believe it's vitally important we empower our local residents. We must listen to their concerns and truly enable them to influence decisions that affect their local areas. Within this budget amendment, we seek to build on the role of constituency committees to provide residents with the power to influence those areas and council services which they have told us are important to them. With this amendment, Mr. Mayor, we've identified how the changes we are suggesting can be achieved and paid for 
spending less on consultants and reviewing senior officer of pay and performance to support frontline services or protect rural residents from the Labour administration's excesses <coughs> and impact. Mr Mayor, our budget amendment tonight is consistent with Conservative Group's values for fairness, opportunity, and passion and security. And if it's passed tonight, it will keep children and young people safe, protect and respect our most vulnerable residents, bear down on unnecessary spending, improve the engagement of our residents with council decision making, and provide opportunities for residents to influence decisions that affect their local area. We believe our aim must be to design and deliver a council that works for everyone. A council where everyone and every community is listened to and their aspirations addressed. I believe our amendment tonight moves the council on that journey and I commend it to the council. Thank you. 